Hey everyone, it's Sevi. With Dendro introducing a lot of changes and improvements to past units and Yai finally having her first rerun, it's the best time to make an updated guide on our favorite Kitsune priestess and publisher, Yai Miko. She's finally gained new potential and synergies in the form of her Aggravate, Hyper Bloom, and Quick Bloom playstyles. Players who had her before must have felt how it refreshed her power level, and for those who are getting her for the first time, there's more about her to enjoy now. This has generally made her a more enticing pull given all her new additions on the table. So in this video, I'm going to discuss Yai's talents, artifact builds, weapon options, team comps, and some notes on Dendro's effects to help you understand how to best maximize her. Let's get into it right here, right now. I am the Guji of the Grand Narukami Shrine. Now, come on, do something amusing for me. To start, let's go over how Yai's talents and kit work together and how to utilize them effectively. Her normal attack is a 3-hit combo of electro damage. Attacking with it covers an area in front of her which is really helpful for triggering dendro cores or even aggravating multiple enemies at a time. They have a standard ICD so you can't spam aggravates with only normal attacks, but since ICD doesn't matter for dendro cores, you can easily trigger hyper booms by auto attacking on field. Alongside normal attacks is her charged attack. It also has travel range in front of Yae, making it more effective if you hit enemies while they're lined up. However, it does have a wind-up time that will feel long if you don't do animation cancelling by dashing or jumping, and there's a possibility an enemy can interrupt her while she's doing the animation. It's best to use her charged attack when you're protected with a shield or safe from enemy attacks. Like other Catalyst users, her charged attack has a separate ICD from her normal attacks, which is good since it means you can chain a consecutive aggravate right after a normal attack. Then we have her skill, which is the core of her gameplay. Casting her skill makes her dash to an indicated direction and places a Sakura turret on the battlefield which periodically deals electro hits to enemies. She can lay down 3 turrets maximum and if they're close enough, they become connected to each other as indicated by this energy thread. The turret has a visual indicator of its level as well, denoted by the rings it has. If a turret is connected to another one, it increases its level, resulting in a higher damage multiplier. At C0, a turret can reach up to level 3. To demonstrate it, if you simply use your skill in a straight line, what might happen is that only the center turret is level 3 and the two on opposite ends are only level 2. But if all turrets are positioned to create a looped connection, then all three turrets are at level 3. Also, if you overlap turrets too closely, that ends up destroying the existing turret. Note that Yai does not get interruption resistance or iframes while summoning turrets, making you at risk during her skill animation. If you're attacked at a bad time, it can be annoying at best or worse, make you spin in the air or take a high damage hit. To avoid that, spawn them away from the enemies or while the enemy is preoccupied. Here are some further notes about her turret's various mechanics. The turrets have standard ICD, so if it's hitting the same enemy, it will only apply electro and trigger a reaction every 3 hits or 2.5 seconds. Her turrets generate one electro particle by hitting an enemy, but the particle generation has a 2.5 second cooldown. Each turret hits one enemy at a time, which makes them generally single target damage, but they actually have a small splash damage effect if enemies are grouped very closely enough. This can also trigger dendro cores that are near an enemy. The targeting mechanics have gone through some weird changes, with some attempted updates reverted due to making her targeting worse, but basically, her turrets will target randomly as long as the enemies are within range. Her turrets do not snapshot, so any buffs that Yai receives or loses will also reflect in the turret's damage. Each turret lasts for 14 seconds on field, and this matters more when you're particular about creating efficient rotations, which I'll get to at the end of her kit discussion. Moving on, casting Yae's burst summons this lightning strike that deals AoE electro damage. It has an initial hit, but it gains up to 3 follow-up thunderbolts by consuming the turrets which are on field, so it can hit up to 4 times total. The best part about her burst is that all these hits have no ICD. This is significant, especially in a quicken team because that means every hit can trigger an aggravate reaction. But her burst does have a very high energy cost of 90 and a long 22 second cooldown time. If you try to burst every rotation, it will lead you to needing more ER on her. It also means that you're forced to do at least a 22 second rotation. However, the easiest solution and even more recommended option is to simply burst every other rotation instead and not 
worry about her ER needs. A lot of her damage output comes from her skill anyway, and by lessening the pressure of building ER, you can focus on other offensive stats. And without being restricted by her 22 second cooldown, you get more rotational flexibility than you would have. Now let's look at her ascension passive talents. Her first ascension passive simply means that for every Sakura turret her burst consumes, she'll also reset a skill charge's cooldown, allowing you to resummon the turrets right away. This effect allows her to maintain her turret's damage uptime more easily. Then her A4 passive is one of the more interesting aspects of her kit because it's gone through a shift in importance from pre-dendro to post-dendro synergy. Every point of EM will add 0.15% skill damage bonus. So for example, if you have 100 EM, that's a 15% damage bonus. Before Dendro, this wasn't as important because the AI didn't really have an effective reaction playstyle to warrant building EM stats. It was an okay bonus to have on the side, but you still wanted attack stats because that improved all aspects of her kit's damage. Now EM has become much more valuable with her Dendro playstyle by increasing Aggravate and Hyperbloom damage while adding to her damage bonus via the A4 passive. And so this perfectly complements her new build requirements by making EM a more efficient stat to have. All in all, if we look at Yai's kit now, it's almost as if she was designed to really synergize with Dendro, as it helps her achieve more versatile roles and a fully cohesive kit design. Yae can assume an on-field role where she combines her auto attacks, skill, and burst to deal lots of electro damage and apply electro. Or she can be an off-field unit that relies on her skill more, coming in the field to refresh them or use her burst. It'll depend on the team comp and the role you put her in. Most of her rotations though will look something like this. Use her skill thrice early in your rotation, switch her out to set up other teammates' abilities, then place her back in to use her attacks and or burst before her turrets expire. Then the rotation restarts by resummoning her three turrets. This method is smoothest in a 15 second team rotation. But if your Yai's team rotation takes a bit longer, the turrets might expire at a certain point before she can burst. This can be addressed by making her refresh them in the middle or end of the duration. So depending on how Yai is used in the team and how much time she spends on field or off field, you'll want to be mindful of timing her abilities to best utilize her kit. Finally, when leveling up her talents, you generally want to prioritize her skill first as it's her main damage source, followed by her burst talent. Her normal attacks can be leveled up depending if you use her on field enough, but it's the least impactful of her skill multiplier, so that's up to you. Yae is already perfectly fine at C0, but let's see what her constellations can add. C1 lets her get energy back with her burst depending on how many follow-up thunderbolts you create. This is a quality of life improvement to her ER needs, allowing you to focus more on building offensive stats. But its value is more pronounced if you are trying to burst every rotation as it really helps reduce the would-be high ER requirement. If you are just bursting every other rotation, then Yai's ER needs are very achievable even just with substats. C2 unlocks the fourth level of turrets, resulting in a nice DPS increase, and extends the range they can hit enemies. The default turret range is already very sufficient, but if you ever do need to hit enemies that strayed too far, then C2 helps with that. C3 increases her skill level by 3. C4 lets her increase your party's electro damage bonus by 20% with her turret hits, which will almost always be in effect. So if she's comped with electro-focused teams like Taser, Aggravate, or Mono Electro, then this is a good increase for your overall team DPS. C5 increases her burst level by 3. And lastly, C6 lets her turret attacks ignore 60% of the opponent's defense, which mirrors the Raiden Shogun C2. There's not much to say other than this is an immense damage increase. If you're looking to main Yae and want her early constellations, you are generally getting quality of life and decent damage improvements for her, but nothing dramatically different. For me, Yae is already quite satisfying at C0 and you can save your primos instead. So, oh, you'd like to know more about me? I'm willing to tell, but what will I gain in exchange, hmm? Moving on, let's take a look at her build recommendations covering her old and new playstyles. For Yai's general build, she will want a crit circlet that gives a 1 is to 2 ratio and an electro goblet. The Sans main stat will depend on what team she's being played in. If you're using her for a non Denjo team, an attack Sans will be much better. But if you are using her in a Quicken team, the difference between an attack and EM Sans is generally small enough that you can use whatever has the best substats. 
A baseline EM goal for a Yai can be 100 to 200 EM, but this isn't a strict rule. Consider any attack or EM buffs her teammates give as well, as you may want to balance those out. If you're really debating between two of your pieces, do personal testing or use a damage calculator. For her substats, prioritize crit stats, EM, attack, and ER. You can aim for 100-140% to ER, and this will allow you to burst every other rotation, or 140-160% to ER, which with an electro battery will let her burst every rotation. If you have no electro battery teammate, then Yai's ER can skyrocket up to 200% plus. But what if you want to play Yae with Hyper Blooms? If you can still maintain some quicken uptime with the core generation, as is the case in Quick Bloom teams, Yae will be able to proc both Aggravates and Hyper Blooms. In this case, Yae can favor an EM Sans to boost reaction damage, but still retain her Electro Goblet and Crit Circlet to buff Aggravate and non-Aggravate damage alongside whatever Hyper Blooms she is triggering. However, in all-out Hyper Bloom teams where there is barely quicken uptime and Yae won't be able to Aggravate, you could give her a full EM build for much higher Hyperbloom damage. That means full EM main stats with EM substats on the flower and feather as much as possible. Now let's check out Yae's best artifact sets. Also, there are some 4-piece sets that synergize with her. Yae doesn't particularly have a best in slot set that is miles ahead of another set or combo. Because of this, the easiest and most efficient set to invest in is simply a 2-piece Thundering Fury combined with a 2-piece attack, 2-piece EM, or 2-piece ER set. Choose the pieces with the best substats and this can outperform 4-piece sets. For 4 p sets, let's go through the ones Yae can benefit the most from. There's Gilded Dreams which gives both attack and EM and synergizes with her EM scaling passive. If there's a 100% uptime on the effect, it can theoretically be Yae's best in slot. However, the Gilded Dreams effect can have some gaps in uptime on Yae. This is because the Gilded Dreams effect has to expire first before it can be triggered again, and the hit that triggers it doesn't benefit from the 4-piece effect. But again, 2-piece combos with really good substats can compete with it. If you're going for a full EM Hyper Bloom build though, Gilded Dreams will help you reach that EM ceiling. Then we have Thunder Soother, which would usually have a high uptime on certain teams. However, it's hard to farm or strongbox a full set, so it's much less recommended. Sharing a domain with Thunder Soother is the Thundering Fury set. The added reaction damage bonus to Aggravate and Hyper Bloom is quite decent on Yae, but she doesn't benefit much from the cooldown reduction mechanic, and you can make up for the reaction damage bonus with EM stats instead. Other Electro units can take better advantage of a full Thundering Fury set. Some of you may also be wondering about a 4-piece emblem build for a burst-focused Yae playstyle. It can certainly be satisfying pulling big numbers out of a burst, but doing so in a practical combat situation would mean building more ER to burst every rotation and reducing her other damage sources. It's something you can do, but I personally wouldn't recommend it. Essentially, you can use any of these 4-piece sets if you happen to acquire one with really good substats, but I'd personally just aim for 2-piece set combos with amazing substats. Many people dread the sound of thunder. To me, it sounds fondly familiar. Let's move on to Yai's weapons and thankfully she has a lot of free-to-play friendly and premium options. Starting off with 3 stars. If you really have no 4 star choices yet, you can use a very cheap magic guide temporarily. It gives a good amount of EM which is very useful for her dendro playstyles and it increases damage to hydro and electro affected enemies which is common with some of her best teams. Then for very rare scenarios where you want to buff another DPS unit, you could try the Thrilling Tails. However, she does enough personal damage to justify wanting a more offensive weapon. Then for the 4 stars, the Widsith is one of her best weapons. Even as a 4 star, it can be comparable to 5 star options. It's a good crit stat stick and even if it has an element of randomness and the effects won't have 100% uptime, the sheer power it gives when the user is buffed totally makes up for it. The Solar Pearl is locked behind the battle pass but is a strong option specifically for an on-field playstyle. That's because the skill and burst damage bonuses do not last long unless refreshed on-field with normal attacks. 
The Wandering Evenstar is a decent choice that increases both her EM and attack. It also has a support utility that increases your teammate's attack based on the user's EM stat. So if you have teammates that appreciate the attack buff, then this weapon's value will be slightly higher. The Fav Codex is a situationally useful weapon, particularly if you are aiming to make her burst every rotation and if you have teammates that are also energy hungry. Yae has good free-to-play 4-star choices too. The Hakushin Ring is a craftable weapon that mainly helps Yae's energy needs and if she triggers an electro-related reaction, the elements involved in that reaction get a damage bonus too. So while this does not necessarily give the highest personal damage for Yae as a free-to-play weapon, it's more of a team DPS increase. The Mappa Mare is another great craftable choice that gives her all the right stats, high attack, EM, and elemental damage bonus. It's better for an on-field playstyle as you do need to be on-field to trigger and refresh its passive effect. The Black Cliff Agate is a Star Glitter purchasable weapon. It's decent for providing a good amount of crit damage, but its attack buff is dependent on if Yae can reliably deal the final hit to enemies, and she has to be on field. More so, you already have good craftable options, and your Star Glitter is better used elsewhere. The Oathsworn Eye is a limited time event weapon, but if you manage to get it, it's a good free-to-play weapon for addressing her ER requirements if you're aiming to burst every rotation. But if you aren't, then it loses a bit of what makes it effective, and you can instead go for another weapon that provides more offensive stats and passives. Finally, for her 5-star options. Kagura's Verity is her signature and best overall weapon in her playstyles unless you're going for a full EM build. Its passive perfectly synergizes with buffing her turrets and it gives high base attack and crit stats. The Lost Prayers is a good 5-star option for being a crit stat stick. While it does give an increasing elemental damage bonus when she's on field, you won't really enjoy it to its fullest potential due to having to rotate through your team's abilities. Still, it helps a lot with balancing her crit stats. The Thousand Floating Dreams is the Dendro Archon's signature weapon, but it's a viable weapon for Yae too, thanks to her Dendro themes, whether for Aggravate or Hyperbloom. Though its best use scenario is for her Hyperbloom playstyle thanks to the crazy amount of EM it gives. Lastly, the Skyward Atlas and Memory of Dust are mainly attack weapons. They're good 5 stars in Yae's pre-Dendro builds and teams since she appreciates the attack stat. However, if you're building her now for Aggravate, attack weapons have reduced potential. Come, join me for a moonlight stroll. I won't take no for an answer. Finally, let's go through Yai's best team comp templates that will maximize her role as an Electro DPS. Quick and Aggravate teams are composed of a core Dendro and Electro unit, often comped with another Electro that's a second source of Aggravate damage. Then the Flex slot is an element that does not interrupt with a Quick and Aggravate reaction. For the Electro slot, there are a lot of options available, so it boils down mainly to what's available to you and what utilities you want. To keep it short, I'll just display the benefits of Electro units on screen which you can pause. Then for the Dendro slot, you have Dendro Traveler or Kole as default free options, and of course Nahida will be an upgrade over them. There's a lot of options for the Flex slot, which can be Animo, Geo, Electro, or Dendro. Preferably, you want Animos to mainly shred the Electro resistance of enemies, and the available Animo units have their own unique utilities or buffs to bring to the table. Still, it's also perfectly fine to comp in a Geo like Zhongli or Albedo, another Electro for more aggravate damage, or another Dendro unit. Unit. Choose according to what you have. Since Yae's ideal rotation time is 15 seconds, it's preferable to comp her with teammates that also work with 15 second or less cooldowns. However, Yae can still definitely work in a 20 second rotation. This first team sample is a 15 second rotation team. Fischl batteries while dealing high single target damage and Kole sets up Quicken. I could use an Animo Swirler for the flex slot, but here I'm using Zhongli's shield instead of a healer. Right now, right here. Stabilize. Go! Fallen Amba, help! My royal <laughs> This second team sample features a longer rotation due to Sucrose and Dendro Traveler's cooldowns. Cookie heals and deals some aggravate damage while Sucrose crowd controls, shreds electro resistance, and also gives an EM buff. Right here, emerge, right here. Uh. 
Right now, right here. Stand clear. Swirl, mark two. Propagate. All in all, there are lots of combos available for an aggravate team. Mix and match to your preference. Then, a spread team basically has the same template as a quick and aggravate team, but the main difference is that you're relying more on spread damage. Spread teams are still a bit limited though, since the only viable dendro DPSs we have right now are Tignari and Nahida. You'll see in the clip right now that I'm using Tignari, who thankfully aligns in a 15 second rotation with Yai. Let's nip that in the butt. Huh. Huh. Nothing lasts forever. Right. Uh. Emerge right now. Hyperbloom is another new playstyle that Yae is great for. The template consists of Yae plus a Dendro and Hydro unit who will generate Dendro cores and a flex slot. The Hydro choice affects the team's damage source. If you want to maximize core generation, having fast Hydro application helps create more cores and doesn't allow the Quicken Aura to stay on the enemy for too long. This results in a more Hyperbloom-centric team. Alternatively, there's the Quick Bloom template, a combination of Quicken and Hyperbloom. This is done by using using a slower Hydro applicator, which means that Hydro does not get rid of the Dendro or Quicken Aura on the enemy as fast. This means that Yae can trigger aggravate reactions more often versus a pure Hyperbloom team. I'll show the units on screen that are viable for either slow or fast Hydro application or both depending on how you use them. You can also insert two Hydro units in the team to result in faster application. Some of these units also help consolidate roles, like how Barbara or Kokomi function as both Hydro applicators and healers, so certain utilities might factor into your team comp preferences. This team sample is a Hyperbloom focused team. Singcho gives interruption resistance with a lot of Hydro application, while Barbara is the team's healer. If you have better 4 star or 5 star alternatives, you can comp them in instead. Ha! Germinate! No, my sword! Rank cutter! Huh? I'll protect us. Yeah, propagate. This second team sample is more of a quick bloom team. Due to Nahida's strong dendro application, comping her in with another hydro will very likely make the team into a quick bloom team. So an electro damage crit build on Yae is more encouraged in this case. Beto's Chain Lightning also does not steal hyper blooms, so Yae can be the guaranteed trigger here. Hot right now. I'm always watching. Emerge right here. I see everything. Make yourselves a move. Power of the ended hunt. Hold the line. Of course, Yai still has her original best team templates before Denjo arrived. One is the Hyper Ride and Yae duo, where both of them are the team's DPSs, while ideally being supported by Bennett and Kazuha. Raiden helps with Yae's energy requirements. Bennett gives an attack buff and heals. Kazuha shreds the enemy's electro resistance and gives a damage bonus buff. If you have Kujo Sara, especially if she's on C6, you can insert her too to buff your electro DPSs, though she does need more planning on how you'll rotate her abilities. But you could also just comp Yae with Fischl instead of Raiden, who acts as a second DPS and batteries Yae too. Another template is the Taser team, which revolves around the electrocharged reaction. The general template involves the Hydro, Electro, and Animo for the first three slots, then the fourth slot is usually another Electro. A Taser team has an on field driver to keep the electro charge going. This can be Sucrose, who can swirl with her auto attacks, group enemies, and give an EM buff to the entire team, Kokomi or Barbara, who can heal the team while applying Hydro on field, or certain on field Hydro units like Child or Ayato. As long as you know Taser's element template, you can tailor your team depending on what's available and your character preferences. Anyway, that's going to be all for this updated Yai build guide. Since Dendro and its reactions came out, Yai's power level has reached a new potential, and her team comp possibilities have significantly expanded. I hope new and old Yai mains thoroughly enjoy that. Let me know in the comments what team you like to play her with, or if you're going to pull her for the first time on her upcoming rerun banner. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care. Are we done?